All right, hello Todd fans. Welcome to Todd Talk. I'm your host, Sean Taylor. Got the normal crew back. Jimmy's back from his duck hunting trip. Jimmy, welcome back. Glad Looks to be like back. he's still duck What's up, Todd? Yeah, Todd fans. I was wondering if that was what he wore on yeah. the duck hunting yeah. trip. I actually could have wore it two first two days. It was extremely hot out there the first two days. Yeah, well it looked like you were having fun. We but had we're a good glad time. to have we you back. I'm I'm glad to be back. Got a lot to be thankful for. Um, coming off big Iron Bowl win, but also Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Um, Maurice, I, I gotta ask. Yes, man, are those new khakis? Well, yes, they are, Sean. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> there ain't no way there are. Hey, no way, no. They're new. No, they're Trust. not. There ain't no way there are. They're, look, I still got the sticker on it. Look, there we go. <laughs> Brand See, new. Look, that's what, what sparked it, me to ask the question. What okay, what my, auto my shop did you get that <laughs> sweater vest in? You know, I found it somewhere in the bottom of the closet. Well, give it back it. to your wife. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, Tide fans, a lot to be thankful for. Big uh, big weekend, uh, Iron Bowl week, you know, coming off a, a, a win with against Auburn. We thought that was going to happen. We thought we'd play the way we played. I think everybody expected that. Not to be boastful, but that's just kind of the expectation. We talked about that. So I want to get two-minute overview from you, two-minute overview from you. Uh, tell me what you thought. And go. So I'm going to start on the defense side of the ball because I was really impressed with how our defense had played on Saturday. I thought they played with an attitude we hadn't seen this year. Um, of course, I'm sure we talked about a lot. I, I'm sure it had something to do with playing our rival, but I thought the defense looked really well, or really good. Uh, I was highly impressed um, with the tackling. That's probably I think it was our best tackling performance of the year. Uh, I mean, across the board. I mean, defensive line. I can just I can name several names on the cross that defensive front that I was impressed with. Um, of course, our two freshmen with, with, with two picks oh, yeah. or a pick a piece. So, highly impressed with the defense. Offensive side, I mean, I thought we looked good. I mean, Mac Jones was Mac Jones. We'd have five touchdown passes. Yep. Um, I, you know, we left maybe that 300 one. 300-plus yards. You know, 300-plus yards. Um, I know we left, you know, that one touchdown on, 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 you know, on the field when we fumbled. Uh, but overall, man, I was, I was highly impressed with both sides of the ball and pretty much came out you know, like we thought it would as far yeah. as the, the score. Maurice? Well, I think it's clear we need to get rid of Saban because Sarkeesian's a better coach. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Uh, I thought it was a decent performance. I think the defense has improved weekly, and they did have a little intensity to them because if Bigsby, as you stated last week, if he gets going, then we could have had a, a long yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, we made one mistake, and luckily Auburn made a mistake on the same play right. with Seth Williams dropping that. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference because I think we were that that much better talent-wise, and I think it showed. And it's not being a snob. Uh, I just think the talent level's a lot better. Offensively, Mac looked good uh, throwing it, and I think they took it personal, some of Bo Nix's comments. Um, Absolutely. But in Bo Nix uh, impressed me as an athlete, not as much as a quarterback, but as a really good athlete, and he can still develop. But I thought we left some points out there. I thought there could have been a little bit more. Um, I thought Najee, you know, he didn't clip, eclipse a 100-yard mark, but I think he could have easily. Yeah. I, I think it was a, you know, above-average performance. Uh, I still don't think they've played their best complete game yet. Uh, which we will get an opportunity in the next few weeks, especially if we get to the next level, which we should. So I thought it was uh, not bad. I, I agree, guys. I, you know, we kind of expected that we play well offensively, but Jimmy, I got to agree with you. Defensively, I thought we played with a lot of intensity. I mean, if you take a look at just the first series, I mean, we pinned our ears back and we came after him and, and you know, got a sack in the first series. You know, we got three sacks which we haven't done a very good job of all year. I mean, we're, I think, 14th, 11th or 14th in the SEC with respect to sacks. So, you know, we came out and did a really good job without a lot of blitzing. So we came out on that, that front seven, did a really good job. I'm starting to see that we have a lot of depth on that front seven. You know, if you start looking at the guys that they're rotating in, now, are, are, are they playing better because they're really fresh? You know, still I'm going to mention DJ Dale. You don't hear his name called a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. He may be doing a good job, but then on on rushing downs or what have you, they bring in, you know, Smith or Aboye. I think that's his name, number 92, who's playing 92 really, really well. He's stud. playing really well. And then, of course, I, I, I have to tell you, I, I like Allen 
and you know coming off the end. I mean, Anderson, Anders, Allen number four, and Anderson on the other yeah. side. There, you know, a- Allen is starting to come into a pass rusher. We believe Anderson's been doing it all year. Yes. You know, he, he's uh-huh. he, he's a freshman and he and he's learning. But but now you got you know Allen coming off. Don't forget Mathis. Yeah, he's really Fidarian Mathis. Is, I think he's really progressed nicely throughout the season. Barrymore. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> just we're starting to see a lot of depth up front, and I believe that that's helping us. And as you mentioned, Maurice, as we get later into the year, starting to play, you know, maybe the SEC championship game, playoff game. I think it's going to make a huge difference. Right. Offensively, yes, Jimmy. You know, we expected to do what we did. I think we could have put up 60 points, to be honest. You know, we, we get you know Young in. We get Bryce Young in early. I mean, that was really good to be your rival, and you get those guys in early to get some playing time. I, I thought that was – you know, we, if, we, if we leave those guys in, we score 60 points. Probably. And again, that's not downgrading Auburn. It's just the fact that no, we I, are more talented. I downgrade Auburn all the time, or <laughs> even degrade them. But yeah, I agree with you. So uh, yeah, I think it was a I think it was a good game. I, I think that that we have not played that one complete game right. yet. Defensively, offensively, you know, we we struggled a little bit the first series offensively. You know, Mac was 0 for four, if I'm not mistaken. You know, maybe that was a little bit of adrenaline, you know, you know, going. And, and it was a drop in there too. But yeah, but you're right. But you know, that's part of the game. But he did come around. I think he finished with eight incompletions, 300 plus yards, as we mentioned, five touchdowns. Um, Najee Harris, you know, could have gotten 100 yards had we left him in and ran more. <coughs> there was no need to. Right. So um, really excited about the fact that we are. It appears that we are playing better defensively, and we're really clicking offensively. Well, you know, early on in the season, we were really on the defensive line. You know, I think I made comments about how I just felt like they were just in this kind of a right. arm wrestling match, yeah. and they wouldn't get any pressure, and you could you don't see them getting them off blocks and making many tackles for that matter. And so, man, I, I, I absolutely love – Again, how we're coming together on that unit. You mentioned the outside guys, but those guys in the middle, man, they're 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 really playing their tails off. And you know, give some credit to the coach. You know, um, Freddie. Might I add a theory? The de- the, 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 the <laughs> position I'm coach. Looking forward the to that. Position theory. coach. Freddie Roach, you mean? Not, yeah, not yeah, voting, Freddy. but yeah, Freddie. <laughs> so I mean, those guys have really improved, and and I'm they telling have. you, they keep getting better, which they have. I mean, that's only going to help us down the road. Makes a huge I mean, difference. There he is, no spring. Freddie Roach, new coach. So poet, and I didn't know it. And uh, I think that it's taken a little bit of time for it to gel, and it's starting to look good. Now, let's be honest. Auburn's offensive line isn't exactly tops <clears throat> in the country. I mean, they... they that's fair. They were missing a couple of starters, That's fair. Right. But that's not my fault. So... But... We can also say, because I can tell you there's been numerous times where we've said that, you know, the other team, either their line or they just wasn't that good of an opponent or what have you, and we did not play as well. This time we're actually able to say, you know, Auburn's offensive line was missing some folks and they, they weren't as good. However, we did what we were supposed to do, which is a, which is a bonus. That's a step up. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we could have, you know, Played poorly, and then we'd be having that same conversation. Man, I wished we would have done better because we we should have against a lesser opponent with with respect to the offense. Well, line. I think there's a reason why I said that you know Bo Nix looks like a really good athlete because he was running. He has to be. He has to be. Yeah. I That's mean right. that that kid was running a few times, and you know there was a couple of times where I was like, you know, when we had position on him to sack, we're aiming for the outside hip instead of the front hip or front shoulder, and he, he was able to step up and avoid it. The kid is talented, He's good. for sure. Yeah. Uh, probably their best overall athlete on offense, which yeah. a quarterback usually should be. But I thought the defensive line played extremely well. They had some intensity. Uh, even linebackers, I thought we did okay. And I'll go back to say, even though it's the youngest part of our team, Secondary is looking extremely good. Really good. Love the secondary. And yes. you see, real quick, I know we got to go to break, but on the linebackers, you see where Christian Harris was 
I think no, finalists, player, finalists for, for the, the buckets yeah, award. Yeah. No, I didn't. So <laughs> cool. So that yeah. there's a, a couple of things to talk about. That's one of them, but also, like you said, the the, the DBs and and the, the the youth that we have back there. But let's take a quick break. We'll come back and talk about that on behalf of Bob English and State Farm. Hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. Bob. Bob. Enjoy the good times a little more with the right plan. As your State Farm agent, I am here to help you protect your dreams and loved ones with life insurance. With over 60 years combined State Farm experience, call me or any of my team to find out which options are best for you. Another way we're here to help life go right. All right, welcome back Tide fans. We were talking right there in the last segment just about uh, the, the play of our DBs and the youth and Jimmy, we had talked before we actually started the show just how well you know our, our DBs are playing. Uh, Malachi Moore, man, I can't. I, it seems like we can talk about him every week. You know, if you if you noticed in the first few series for Auburn, I mean, he was pressing the line. He was up there on run plays. I mean, yes. he tackles really well. Who does that remind you of? He <laughs> <laughs> number number 29, I believe. That, that would be, yeah. You know, he tackles really well. He covers really well. You know, well, I just can't just say enough the, about the him. The one play, which was the time, or because we all know what play it was, to me was 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 just the, the, the hammer or the explanation point on how that defensive uh, side played, or at least in the secondary. It was when that 350-pound tight end caught the ball in the open field and – Jordan Brent, Battle put it. Battle came up. On him at 200 pounds and stuck him in his tracks and tackled him. And he actually had to come off the, the tight end so, had to come out, out you know, of the game for yeah, a couple yeah, I mean, <laughs> so again, that, that's, that's how we were playing. I mean, to me, you know. To me, it looked like our defense was playing with a lot more confidence. We didn't look as lost. We looked like we were in position. And that says a lot with Auburn's offense and the way they motion and formation. If you're, if you're looking for a compliment from me, I'm just on the because when they showed him on the sideline, I said you still look confused. But uh, the defense <laughs> itself didn't. But I, I mean, I'm he looks like a nice guy. I don't know. He just the defense was well in tune. Nothing came at them that was a surprise. Uh, they did a couple of trick plays or you know a couple of things to try to confuse them. It didn't work. And usually Gus's mo if it doesn't work, it's Kind of blows up. All right, let me just tell you how good that defense is playing right now. Stats with Jimmy. I know you tied fans. Y'all missed me last week. So we got a lot to catch up on. Um, so we'll go right into the defensive side of the ball. So right now we are first in the conference when in, in scoring defense at 18.5 points a game, 17th nationally. And where were we a month ago? Nowhere near those numbers. Not in the conversation. Um, <laughs> Rushing defense, 100, 119 yards a game, fourth in, in, in the conference, 27th overall. Um, passing defense, again, we're moving up every, every week with there too, um, giving up 238, third in the conference, 70th overall. Um, total defense, we're fourth overall in the conference, 36th overall, which again, which are big improvements from early on. And, and let me just add to that real quick, Jimmy, and you can continue, but, yeah. but some of that is <clears> – <throat> you got to put that in perspective because some of these teams have only played five games. True. You know, we've played eight SEC games, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's a significant – Not only five, some have only played two right. out west. Right. So, so, so you got to put that in perspective oh, yeah. as our rankings are because, you know, again, let's look at – we had to play against Ole Miss, you know, who they're, – they're, they're up there in the SEC in passing and rushing. And, and so you've got to put that in perspective That's when right. you talk about how we're ranked nationally. I agree. So quick question, trivia question. Who leads the SEC right now in tackles for loss? Real quick. Alabama. Anybody. anybody. No. Not Indi us. Individually. Individually. Um, Missouri. Individually, not team-wise. Oh, oh. A person. I don't know. Malachi Moore. No. Chris Allen. I was ah, just talking about him. Just yeah, Chris Allen ago. leads the it's conference weird. in tackles for a loss, and he's, of course, ninth in sacks. Malachi Moore is tied for second place in the conference with his picks. Um, 
And, uh, of course, i got to give a shout-out to our special teams guy who still has not missed a kick, Sheriff, All-American, um, as I mentioned early in the All season. You're just going to keep poking that bear. So, uh, of course, offensively, you know, I mean, we're still kind of holding serve offensively. I mean, we're still um, – well, we're actually second in the league, I think, behind Ole Miss. Yep. Uh, scoring offense. Actually, we're first in scoring offense, third nationally, first in, in uh, uh, I mean, third in, in rushing offense, third in, in actually passing offense now. So, but we're still kind of holding serve on that side of the ball. But, but, uh, but I want to give a shout out to the defense. So, again, <clears throat> let's go back at the number of games where, you know, our, <clears throat> num our twos have been in in the third and fourth quarter. I mean, that, you know, maybe that's part of it, but that makes a difference. So there's things that you got to put in perspective, but, um, you know, that's just something to consider because we're just – Saban is not the guy that's a stats guy. I mean, I think that he is okay with that because he likes to say that his, you know, quarterback is, in, you know, in the Heisman running or what have you, but he, he doesn't think about that and he's going to leave him in or run up – run up the scoreboard and run up stats, which certainly could happen. We could have done that this past weekend. Um, but uh, Maurice, we were you know, talking about Malachi Moore and how he reminds you of Minka Fitzpatrick. He does indeed. I mean, you know, the, the, the DBs themselves, you know, Joe played a, I mean, played, a fun, played a really good football game this past weekend. He was um, listed as the special teams player of the week. You know, we're just starting to see – in my opinion, <clears throat> and it's taken some time. You, you made the comment, you know, no spring, new coaches, you know, Freddie Roach, and you, you're starting to see them look more comfortable. Yes. You're starting to see some confidence in the play. And and we're not mentioning his name a lot, but, man, Patrick Sertan's doing a really, really good job. And, and there's usually a reason why you don't hear his name so much because quarterback is, you know, been scouted to say, hey, don't throw it that way. Right. Let's right. look elsewhere. Let's look for a single coverage with somebody else if we can find it. But I think Sertain is doing a, a wonderful job. Uh, but, you know, still the name that pops out there is Malachi Moore. Yeah. I would be surprised if, I don't, and you, you may have the awards list or whatever, albeit kind of early considering West Coast, uh, that don't jump on me, but more should be maybe mentioned in the Jim Thorpe DB uh, category as a finalist. Uh, to me, he's playing that good. I don't think he should be penalized just because he's an actual true yeah, freshman. Yeah, agree. And, and but look, you know, you know, Branch played a really good football game. He's coming in and giving some great time. And and I've ridiculed Wright several times because he's had some some. He might be the weak link out there, but still. But not, he, played really, he played really. Yeah, he played better. He played better Saturday. He, he he had a better game Saturday. Not just because he had a pick, but he made some really good tackles in open field. The only thing that I really saw that we didn't do a very good job of, and you mentioned it, and that was the deep ball. You know that that it was a breakdown in coverage. Yeah. Um, I, well, you it was know, a double move. Which, is I, what which we, I was going to say, which is difficult on. sometimes, especially when you're being aggressive. You know, look, we scored on one. You know, we get that hard pump fake, and they've talked about that since Saturday, how aggressive that pump fake was from Mac Jones. But those are difficult when you're being aggressive. You know, you want to bite on that. Now, that was a little bit of miscommunication, whether or not the safety was supposed to help. Over the right. top. or, or right. And I agree. But you know what? That's going to happen sometimes. Um, and I think that was really, in my opinion, the only – Big right. breakdown that we had. So, of all these guys' names we've been mentioning on the defensive side of the ball, we've been praising that side, which we should be, especially not just this past week, but really the last three or four games. I mean, the one name that's missing. Dylan Moses. I mean, Dylan Moses. I mean, are you kidding me? But, but I mean, Harris is a finalist. Well, <laughs> and, and I mean, Moses to be fair, to, to Sean's point previously, maybe his presence being out there is exactly just, where I was going. just what is needed to run things. Just because you're the captain doesn't mean that you have to be the best player. It's the same conversation if you read the article today regarding Devontae Smith and this conversation is his rankings in the Heisman talk. Well, they, you know, they talked about, Mechie even mentioned that there's nobody better than Devontae Smith. But they kind of go to Mac Jones saying, well, Mac Jones is the guy getting him the ball. So to that point, you know, Dylan Moses is the guy out there, and he's putting them in position, and they're making plays. 
Right. That might be the most critical thing that he's able to do. And to be fair, that's what we were getting on him about last year because he had two true freshmen playing linebacker that couldn't really orchestrate. And and so you have Moses out there that, or Moses that knows where everybody's supposed to be. That's right. And you don't know what's being said in the huddle or just signals that he's given to make sure everybody's in the right place. Yeah, it's tough to really say because you're not hearing his name a lot, but it's the same thing I said about DJ Dale. You know, DJ Dale may be doing a phenomenal job and we just don't see it because his name's not being called over the TV, but he may be doing exactly what is required of him. And I think that's kind of what's going on with Dylan Moses. But um, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and talk a little bit about some, some more about that, but then, of course, we'll get into the big game with LSU this weekend. So uh, let's uh, hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call me, Bob English, or any of my experienced hometown team and find out how you could start saving today. It's just another way. All right, Todd fans, welcome back. Um, You know, Jimmy, you bring up a good point. Are we going to talk about the offense? It's almost kind of the... I don't know, the, the, the given that the offense is going to show up and play. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we've expected. And you're right, probably the best offense in the country. And, yeah. and, and you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time. Now, is that because the defense has improved more? You know, the offense has been pretty solid all year. We've seen a lot of improvement on the defensive side. But, but yeah, man, you can't say enough – and of, and, of course, the guys up front don't get enough conversation. Right. And, man, that's where it all starts, in my opinion. Best in the country. I think we talked about it early in the season. That was going to be the strength or one of the strengths on that side of the ball, and absolutely it is. I mean, they, you, you got to argue that they are the best. In well, the well, I mean, they, in, my, in our opinion, they are. I think they are. But the one that's getting – offensive line is getting all the attention. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah. They're big, and they're seniors as well, just like ours. I'll take hours over there, and we'll find out maybe. Hopefully. hopefully. Come uh, <laughs> January. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you know, listen, I, I've said it before. I'll state it again. Notre Dame's got to prove it to me. you got to let 2012 go. I, I, I can't. It was eight years ago. I, I know it was, but I, I can't. I, if, if they get there and mm. we play them and they thump us, then I'll give – you know, Brian Kelly and Notre Dame, I'll give them credit. Well, but until I, then – I appreciate Jimmy offering that if we go to Miami and play Notre Dame, he's paying for it. I right, appreciate that. Exactly. Yeah, that he is, did mention that on that the is, hey, let, Let's put something into perspective. Just kind of reel this back into Alabama stuff again instead of Notre Dame. Just this Alabama show, not Notre Dame. I don't know how you, why, we, why we get we off get, on these did things. Did we get a new host? Hey, does, he, does he get upset? I don't know. So, it like I a, thought it said I mean, with Sean Taylor. So anyway. think about this. Mutiny. Obviously, I mean, arguably the, the – Number one or best <coughs> offensive line in the country. Yes. You could argue we have the best running back in the country. You could argue we have the best receiver in the country. Maybe not the best quarterback from from style points and all that, but arguably the best He's a good game, statistically. game manager. He's a good game manager. I mean, have we ever had – I mean, look, we've had some studs on that side of the ball the last <coughs> few years, but have we ever had that at Alabama? Where you every, could argue? every year that they have come out where we had a lot of people returning, they always spoil it by saying, this could be Alabama's best offense ever. Right. I'm like, you know, you jinx them, shut up, and they fall flat. This offense has not fallen flat. I mm. mean, they are – to your point earlier, yeah, we expect – Anytime that they go out there, there's a good chance we're going to score here. As a matter of fact, who wasn't upset that we got the ball first and we didn't, you know. Right. We, right. It's like, what, what, what's this crap? Right. And then, of course, next series, you know. Oh, yeah, score. I was extremely upset we didn't score the fourth possession. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, that's it's tough because, you know, you can go back and name n- numerous receivers that have come out of the – the program and running backs that have come out of the program. I mean, look at the statistics in the NFL with respect to, you know, the University of Alabama tags on them. I, you know, 
But this year, you know, again, I'm not saying Smitty's the best we've ever had, but just in this season. Last year's core, starting three, were the best. There ain't no doubt. But this year's not too shabby, especially if Waddle. Right, right I was going to say, and, and you're taking Waddle out of the mix with that. Right. I, but I want somebody to recognize, I, I mean, I'm not one to pat myself on the back, but. Yeah, you are. The, the number three guy that I mentioned, Mechie, has turned out to be. I mean, really, really impressive. The guy blocks really well. If you watch some of the plays when we run Devontae on a jet sweep or when, you know, we get a running back in the back, you know, the joker's downfield blocking and he's locked up. Who, who was the freshman the other day or, uh, that missed the block on a little – Quick screen. Uh, um, when Smitty got lit up. Yeah. Um, it <laughs> just was number down. five. Uh, it, just number, it was a know, freshman. That's it was number five. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. And I apologize, number five. But uh, The reason I brought that up he's is. He's going to be a good receiver, but he was out there. He missed that block. But the reason I brought that up is because, like you were saying, Mechie is out there making a block, and then you see the difference when somebody doesn't. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, yes. And, and look, well, just last year, Mechie was a freshman and wasn't really talked about a lot. He right. was, you know, of course, he's playing behind the guys that you mentioned before, Ruggs and. You know, and, and, hey, and one other thing, too, not to overlook, but do we have a new up-and-coming stud at tight end who's stepping up, making plays on the offensive side? I, you know, we ball. talked about it last week. Billingsley is, is I mean, a he threat. Looks, he he yeah, is a threat. He, he looks really good. I mean, he, he, he is a threat. I mean, he, he doesn't have that build that Forrestal has, so, you know, different dynamic. Right. But you can't put a linebacker on him because he's quicker and more agile. Right. You know, so I, man, to me, he's even more agile than OJ Howard. I, I was just not as big. Just about to say, yeah, he, yeah, he's he just not as big. But I'm telling, he's he's quicker to me. He's fat. I mean, he's, he he's like a bigger wide receiver. He's kind of like uh, Kyle Pitts at Florida. He's a uh, big, yeah. just not really that big. But he is playing tight end. Yeah, he's got great hands, good speed. So yeah. yeah. So, you know, Jimmy, I was talking to you before um, before the show. The LSU game coming up this weekend. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we I think we're really excited about it. I was reading the article about Nick Saban's press conference, and you know, at, people are asking, you know, is is the revenge factor? You know, is that? And of course, he tried to downplay that, <laughs> but then he come back and said, "But you know, it's human nature. You know that that you want to, you know, right the wrong, and yeah. you know, yeah, it's coming." Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Watch what you say. It's coming. I can always come back to bite you. (laughs) You know, he even referenced that, you know, especially players, they want to, you know, they they don't like losing in the way that they lost. And then the things that happened. (laughs) The celebration on the field. Yeah, you know, the the conversation in the locker room. So I got you. I got you. Dude, I'm so excited about this game now. I can't – I'm so – I, mean, I wish it was today, you know, but um, it's perfect storm. I mean, LSU's obviously down. We can't we can't say they're not. Alabama's playing extremely well, and so it it's gonna be it's gonna be a beatdown, and I'm gonna love every minute. But of but it. isn't but isn't this what we've said over and over again? They're experiencing what we experience every year. Minus the coaching changes, right? You know, we experience players leaving and leaving early with coaching changes. You know, they win the national championship and they lose some some talented players. They did. They we lost, do it every year. They well, lost, they, well, but, they, but they lost their coaches too. They lost thirty three personnel, including coaches and players from last year. Uh, Aranda and Brady, they went on their separate ways and they took some assistance with them. But, as I said, when Kirby got hired at Georgia, it's one thing to recruit and coach, but it's another thing to manage. And that's what, that's another great thing that Nick does that doesn't get mentioned enough is the ability to manage players, manage coaches, has his list of who's next, right. who do I need to go after. And so, yeah, so Coach O, a lot of, I, I like Coach O, a lot of success, but kind of didn't handle it too properly last too, too well. No. Yeah, I just think that it's it, it is a statement to the dynasty of the University of Alabama and Nick Saban. Uh, every year 
you win a national championship, you're back in the conversation the next year. You lose coaches, you lose talented players, you use, lose juniors early, and you're back in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, LSU is three and four. Have they won three? And, you know, they're, <laughs> they're three and four after winning the national championship. Right. You, you just don't see that happen. And, and I don't think people understand that enough as it relates to Alabama. They don't um, understand how difficult it is to manage mm -hmm. coaches, players, who's waiting. We, we're we're going to have to face it next. Sarkeesian's going somewhere next year at the end of this year. Oh, yeah. I There's mean, no so so I guarantee you Nick Saban's planning the, on that. Hopefully outside the SEC. <laughs> and and, and he's, he's got somebody. Well, the, you know, and I always like to look at, you know, the coaching carousel is one of the things I do. This year right now does not appear to be that many jobs that are open, or that will be open. Uh, biggest one, I think, or the biggest two, I think, will be Michigan and maybe so, UCLA. And South Carolina. Well, I don't, I, you don't look at that as a big job. No, though, because right? it's so, I mean, even to the point where Hugh Freeze is being talked about, but I think he's taking his name out saying, I don't want to go there. Right. If you're, if you're getting that big, you know, where you're getting that much recognition, you want to go. But Sarkeesian has the ability to go, and I don't mean to get ahead of, you know, these coaches or these schools, but if he has the opportunity to go to Michigan or UCLA. Right. He'll, he'll right. jump at it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that brings us to time for predictions. Maurice, hmm. we're, we're 28 and we're 28 plus point favorite. When's the last that time that happened against LSU? Right. <laughs> uh, you know, there's always that flat factor after a big game, but I really don't think we were that emotional over this one. I don't either. I was going to say that. I'm going to guess. Uh, Again, I'm going into the 50s, and I and if you, you know, you watch the A and M LSU game, and Coach O pulled the quarterback and got on him, and they are just not jelling. Nothing. 52 to six is that bad? Look, it's going to be ugly, like I've already mentioned. It's going to be a lot to a little. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like at the Kentucky score. I mean, really, I I can't see LSU scoring. As, good, as well as we're playing on the defensive side of the ball. And they dang sure ain't going to stop us on, on offense. So, I mean, really, it could be as bad as Saban wants it to be. I, I really feel that our guys are going in. I believe Nick Saban's going in with a chip on his shoulder. I believe he's yeah. – I, I believe he took offense to Coach O's post-game celebration last year. Right. I believe our guys took offense to how their team responded on the field last year at our place – and, man, I, I'm telling you, don't be surprised if it's not upper 50s, maybe 62 to 7. I, I think we're going to pour it on them, and we're going to pour it on them. If it does, I'll say this, the only negative thing, it'll have to be the starters. Hard and heavy. Second team offensively right. Right. continues to sputter, just not in I, I don't That'd be the only reason why we don't score 60. Is, is if, if they put if, them in if, early. If they're playing half the third and the whole fourth. Yeah. Other, other than that, we'll – It'll be ugly. Okay. Well, it's going to be good to come back here and talk about it. Um, we'll, we'll be right back here next week on Channel 207. You can check us out on our YouTube channel. But uh, I, I don't have any doubts um, that the tide will roll. So um, see you next week right here, Tide fans, on Tide Talk. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.